This, this is a hard video to make, but uh, I'm going to try anyway. When you think of a mirrorless camera that's great at both photography and videography, odds are you're thinking of this one brand. The brand, with four letters in its name, hails from the land of the rising sun and has built up such an incredible reputation for itself in this space. Sony. Just look at some of your favourite YouTubers. If they're using a mirrorless system, they're probably on Sony. I mean, even we shoot almost exclusively on Sony a7III's. Their quality and versatility is just unarguable, and I have a lot of respect for these cameras. But for me personally, I've never been enamoured with Sony's shooters. You see, Sony's cameras, while they are amazing at what they do, they've always lacked something that I always look for in whatever camera that I buy. They lack a soul. I know, it sounds ridiculous, but this intangible feeling that I get is very important in determining whether or not I will spend my money on something. Which is why I own this, the Fujifilm X-T20. It just speaks to me in a way no Sony, no other digital camera in fact, had before. Maybe it has something to do with its retro good looks, or maybe it's that incredibly well-built body, or perhaps it's the way the images look and how you shoot with it. I can't really explain it, but to me, my T20 has a soul, and at the time, that's all that mattered to me. That was until I used this little guy, the Sony A6400. Mwah. Now this isn't just your regular vlogger review of the Sony a6400. I'm not a vlogger, which means I'm already out of Sony's target demographic for this camera. I mean, I tried to vlog for the purpose of this review, but that really didn't turn out too well. Instead, this is going to be a review of the a6400 from the perspective of someone like me. You see, while I'm not a vlogger, I do film myself a lot when I make videos, well, videos like these. And when I have to cover events like Computex, I usually fly solo, so I need a camera that's portable. I need a camera that's versatile, functional, and capable. And Sony's new A6400 checks a surprising number of boxes. Let's start with its body. What Sony has done with the tiny A6400 is nothing short of stellar. Sure, it doesn't deviate a whole lot from their APS-C cameras, but when you actually use it, you kind of realize that they didn't have to. Just look at how it compares to my T20. It's got a smaller footprint and because it lacks the SLR style viewfinder, it also is a lot easier to pack. But the important thing here is that Sony hasn't sacrificed the camera's ergonomics. Unlike the Fujifilm, the A6400 has a nice chunky grip that's comfortable and substantial enough that it doesn't feel like the camera will slip out of your hands. And everything you need to control the camera is right there, so you can reach basically everything without needing to shift your grip too much. If I had one gripe, it would be that the A6400 lacks a remappable front control dial, so you're forced to use the control wheel at the back, alongside the top control dial, which isn't the most comfortable thing. That said, I do like the new flip-up touchscreen on the A6400. Yes, I would have preferred a fully articulating display instead because I shoot myself a lot, but the flip-up screen doesn't affect me as much as it would affect the vlogger because I don't usually mount shotgun mics on the hot shoe. I use one of these, uh, a wireless lavalier that I can just clip to the camera strap to get it out of the way or just use a regular wired lavalier. I do, however, wish that Sony would allow us to do more with the touchscreen, besides just adjusting the focus point. On my Fujifilm, I can actually swipe through the gallery and pinch to zoom like a smartphone, which is pretty useful. But again, this is a pretty minor gripe, so I wouldn't give Sony a hard time for this, especially since they've built in so many other useful features. I mean, the A6400 has a 3.5mm mic jack, a micro HDMI port, and a micro USB port that you can use to charge the camera while you're shooting on it, something I wished my T20 could do. 
Because of this, I didn't mind only having one battery in my review unit because I could shoot with it tethered to my power bank for the entire day. One other nice touch I appreciated with the A6400 was that I could still access the battery and SD card even with a quick release plate attached. You have no idea how I have missed this from my X-T20. Sony also removed the recording limit on 4K video, so you're not limited to just 15 minutes per shot like the A7 III. I also didn't run into any overheating issues, which was surprising considering my hot experience with the A6500. And image quality, I mean, do I really need to talk about this? It's a new Sony APS-C camera, so of course it's gonna be good. It's great. And if you wanna see a lot more of the stuff that we shot, you can check out any of my Computex videos because those were shot entirely on the A6400. I will say that for my event coverage workflow, I don't shoot in S-Log or HLG or Cinephore or anything like that because I have a very short turnaround time. So for the most part, I shoot without any picture profile, so there isn't too much to tweak in post. If you really need the details on how the A6400's footage grades, there are already dozens of videos out there by people who are much better at it than we are, so you can check those out instead. I was also very impressed with the A6400's autofocus performance. The way the camera is able to track a person seamlessly switching between IAF and face AF was nothing short of incredible. However, if you do set the AF drive and sensitivity too high, it can get a little jittery. My one consistent problem with the A6400 is that atrocious kit lens it comes with. My review unit only came with the 16-50mm OSS PZ kit lens, and let me just say that my copy of that lens was awful. It made me really appreciate how good the XF18-55 kit that comes with my T20 really was. Once I slapped on our 24-70G master lens, however, the change in image quality was drastic, to say the least. Here's a quick comparison shot with the same settings just to illustrate my point. So, if you plan on getting the A6400, I'd avoid getting the standard kit bundle if you can afford it. I've read that there's a lot of variance in the quality of that 16-50mm kit, so you could take your chances, but I definitely wouldn't. So what we have here is an incredibly capable camera in an incredibly compact body. And in fact, in some ways, I think it's even more practical than some of its full-frame siblings. But I have to say that in many ways, it also comes with a lot of the things that I don't like about using Sony cameras. For starters, that body. Even though it's so compact and comfortable to hold, it feels really cheap in the hand. I don't actually think it's built poorly because it feels very robust. It just doesn't feel expensive the way that my X-T20 does. I'm also disappointed by the lack of in-body image stabilization. I get it, if you put that in this camera, then nobody would buy the X6500. But come on, you had the chance to make the perfect run and gun camera here, but you blew it. Then we've got the super convoluted menu system. My gosh, Sony, what the f***? As someone who is new to your cameras, you really make it hard for me to find anything in the labyrinth that you call a menu. Honestly, I wish I could bring a ball of yarn with me, but I doubt that would help me much either. I will give you credit for the excellent graphical custom button mapping feature, but everything else is just like finding a haystack in a coal mine. But I think in the grand scheme of things, the stuff that they get right far outweighs the stuff that they get wrong. Sure, the menu system is convoluted, but if you spend enough time using it, you'll eventually figure it out. And yes, the lack of IBIS is annoying, but you can always use a lens with optical steady shot, or stick it on a tripod, or just learn to hold it steady. These are problems you can overcome, and if you're willing to learn to do that like I did, what you end up with is just such a complete camera experience. Plus, you can get a full kit lens plus freebies for under 5,000 ringgit, which is about the same price you'd pay for like a Mark VI RX100. Then if you need more glass, you can pull from the wealth of Sony, Samyang, and Seven Artisans glass, among others, or you can also just adapt practically any other lens to Sony's E-mount. Yes, I know I started out this video complaining about the fact that this incredible camera lacked some kind of intangible feeling that I likened to a camera's soul. But after using this for the past week and experiencing all the practicality, the versatility and just 
the raw capabilities of this little guy, it made me realize something. You see, I only ever use my digital cameras for work these days. And when it comes to a device like that, does it really matter that it doesn't have a soul? Is it worth giving up all of this? I think my answer is no, because if I really wanted to feel that connection with photography, I'd pick up something like this, a 200 ringgit Yashica Electro 35 GT film camera. Or I'd pick up a Canon FTB, or both. Because you see, while this is an homage to the good old days of film and that raw connection you have with photography, this is the real deal. And this, this Sony A6400, well, it's just incredible. And that's it for this video. Just to be clear, I'm not saying that the Fujifilm X-T20 is a bad camera by any means. I still really like it and I think it still takes great images. I was just really surprised with how much the A6400 was able to win me over. But let me know what you think of this tiny little camera from Sony in the comments below. Also, this is my first full-on camera review, so I'd love to hear your thoughts and feedback on what you think we can improve for our future videos. Did you like the format? You know, all that good stuff. Uh, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on that notification bell. You know, all that good stuff. Alright, that's it for me for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!